Would you choose to eat a sandwich kept overnight in the refrigerator? Or the one left on the table for a night? Hello boys and girls! I'm teacher Elaine and thank you for watching ITTV. Okay, from the previous lesson, we have learned about food spoilage. Right, so today we are going to learn about food preservation. Welcome back boys and girls. Well, when you go into the kitchen, what do you see? You can see bottled ketchups, canned sardine, canned tuna or bottled chili sauce and many more, right? There are also dried foods like dried nuts or dried raisins that you can observe in your kitchen, okay? So, what is food preservation and why do we need to preserve food? We need to preserve food to maintain the freshness of food, that's one. And the other one is to slow down food spoilage or to slow down the growth of microorganisms, okay? Okay, if you have food which is spoiled, let's say you have like rotten bread on your table, what do you do? When you see rotten food, you of course immediately throw them away and don't consume them, right? So when you're throwing away spoiled food, this means food wastage. If we preserve food, food preservation will slow down microorganisms growth and prevent food spoilage. Then we would know, be able to throw the food away, right? We don't have to throw them away. So food preservation prevents food wastage too. Children, from the previous lesson, we have learned what causes food spoilage. It is, ah, do you remember? Yes, the microorganisms such as bacteria and fungi. Okay, now let's look at some slides of notes to tell you about food preservation. Food preservation is a process of treating and handling food to slow down food spoilage. Boys and girls, there are many different methods of food preservation such as drying, boiling, cooling, vacuum packing, pickling, freezing, bottling or canning, pasteurizing, salting, smoking, and waxing. Wow, so many different ways. Can you remember them? Well, each different methods of food preservation uses different ways or steps to preserve them. Boys and girls, do you remember from the previous lesson? I told you, what are the conditions that is suitable for microorganisms growth? Microorganisms like to live in warm, damp and dark condition, right? And they also need, what are their basic needs for microorganisms growth? They also need air, nutrient, suitable temperature, suitable acidity and many more, right? And also water. Okay. So we know that, let's say, we know that these microorganisms need water in order to grow. So we can remove water from the food substances so there won't be any water in your food. Then this will slow down microorganisms from growing and makes your food last longer. So let's take a look at the first method of food preservation. Drying. For example, the dried chilies. Bacteria dies or becomes inactive when the food is dried. Other examples of dried food are such as dried raisins, dried nuts, and many more. Boys and girls, there are a lot of foods which are preserved by the drying method. When drying or putting under the sun, this draws the water out from your food, okay? Then there will be a reduced amount of water inside your food. Okay, then microorganisms without water, they do not like to grow there. Then this slows down the growth of microorganisms. In the market, you can observe many different types of dried foods. The next time you go to the market or supermarket, can you identify them? 
Okay, we are going to move on to the next method of food preservation, which is smoking. What is smoking, children? Smoking also involves the removal of water from the food. Okay, smoking is the process of drying food with smoke for a long period of time. I've included some pictures to show you what are the examples of smoked food. For example, smoked salmon, smoked ham, and smoked meat. Okay, boys and girls, what about salting? What does salting do to your food? Can you name me an example of salted food? Yes, the salted fish. You can see salted fish being sold in the markets, right? And also even in the supermarkets. Okay, why do they need to salt the fish? Well, salting also includes the removal of water. When you add salt onto your food, water will come out. Salt draws water out from your food. Like I said, there is no water in the food, then microorganisms will not grow so fast, right? Okay, the salted fish. What are the steps in salting the fish? If you buy a fish, the fish that you choose, then you will have to wash the fish and gut the fish. Next, you add salt or cover salt around the fish. Then you dry them under the sun. Simple, isn't it? I'll show you some examples of salted food. This is a picture of drying the salted fish. Well, salt draws water out from the food so that bacteria and fungi becomes inactive. Other types of food which include salting are such as salted egg. So do you like to eat salted food children? Like the salted egg and salted fish? Well, not only fish and egg can be salted, some vegetables can also be salted. Well, when you go to the market, you can ask mommy to point you out what are the other examples of salted vegetables. Now, it's freezing and cooling time. We'll move on to see the refrigerator, okay? I'm sure you can identify which part of the refrigerator is for cooling and which part is for freezing. This is a picture of the refrigerator, children. Okay, the top part is for freezing and the down part is for cooling. Well, some fridge, the lower part is for freezing whereas the upper part is for cooling. You will have to identify them yourself. Well, when you see ice inside the fridge, well, that part is for freezing. What does freezing and cooling do? It helps your food to last longer. It is also another method of food preservation, okay? When mommy comes back from the market, she has fruits, chicken, fish, prawns and vegetables. Can you help mommy? Keep the food she bought in the right place to ensure they last longer. Okay, from this slide, we have fish, papaya, chicken, prawns, cucumber, meat, spinach and egg. Wow, mummy bought lots of food from the market. Can you help her sort it out into the fridge according to the appropriate way of food preservation? Okay, let's see. Fish. When mummy comes back with one fish, where should you put it? Freezing or cooling? Freezing. What about papaya? It is cooling. Boys and girls, papaya is a kind of fruits. You usually put fruits into the cooling part, but you do not freeze the food. Well, some other fruits are exceptional such as banana. When mommy buys banana bag, you do not put them into the refrigerator. Banana is more appropriate to left outside the fridge. So we have chicken. Chicken, you should freeze it. What about prawns? Freezing. Cucumber. Yes, cooling. Meat. Freezing. Spinach, 
cooling and egg cooling you have seen right that mommy puts her egg and vegetables in the cooling pot do not freeze your vegetables you just have to put it in the cooling pot okay so what does cooling or refrigeration do cooling or refrigeration they provide a low temperature this low temperature actually slows down the growth and action of microorganisms boys and girls now you know why you have a big fridge at home right to preserve food yourselves now we'll move on to the another method of food preservation which is pickling pickling involves salt vinegar and sugar these three are usually used in pickling what does vinegar do vinegar provides an acidic condition that inhibits or prevent the growth of microorganisms what about salt and sugar salt and sugar draws water out from food children from just now we have said that microorganisms they require a suitable acidity to grow and also water this is why we use salt and sugar in pickling to draw water out from the food so that microorganisms do not grow what about vinegar vinegar what does vinegar taste like it tastes sour right yes this vinegar has a high acidity this high acidity will prevent the growth of microorganisms too because microorganisms require the suitable acidity to grow let's take a look at some pickled foods pickled mango pickled cucumber and pickled papaya children do you like to eat pickled food do you know how they taste like yes it's a little bit sour and sometimes sweet too these are used to preserve food can you name me some other examples of pickled food yes i'm sure you can right okay now we'll move on to bottling or canning what is bottling or canning in bottling or canning food is heated and sealed in an airtight container Food is boiled to kill microorganisms and then sealed or cover to prevent the re-entering of microorganisms inside the bottle or can. Boys and girls, you have a canned food. You make sure that your food is clean, you cook them. Then you make sure your can is clean too. You put the food in the can and boil it to kill microorganisms, right? So you have to seal this can, cover it to prevent exposure to the air or microorganisms. So bottling or canning involves sealing it to prevent the re-entering of microorganisms from the air. Okay? So although bottling or canning is a method of food preservation, it also has its disadvantages. Okay? We'll talk about it later. But let's see what does a bottle or canned food look like? In the supermarket, we can observe many, many different kinds of canned and bottled food. This includes the canned tuna, the bottled ketchup, the bottled soy sauce, the canned sardine, canned meat, and many more. Like I said, disadvantages of bottling and canning. Its disadvantage is that the boiling process during bottling or canning changes the food taste and its texture. Boiling to a high temperature will also cause the nutrients in food to be lost. Children, you have to remember that although food preservation is good to help your food to be fresh for a longer period of time, it also has its disadvantages. Well, pasteurization pasteurization it is often used in pasteurizing milk so what is pasteurization pasteurization involves a process in heating food to a certain temperature for some time followed by rapid cooling 
heating at high temperature kills most bacteria. Okay, this is an example of pasteurized milk. Boys and girls, pasteurization, they do maintain the taste and the nutrient of the food. How does the term pasteurization comes from? Right, have you ever thought about that? Well, Louis Pasteur, the scientist, in 1862, he invented a process called pasteurization. He found this process where it is able to kill the microorganisms in food and therefore it is named after Louis Pasteur and therefore it is pasteurization. What is the next one? Waxing. How does waxing preserve our food? Waxing prevents moisture loss, enhances the appearance of the fresh produce and even inhibits growth of fungi. Boys and girls, waxing. Have you ever seen like apples that look shiny in the supermarket, right? Well, the actual apple is not that shiny. It is because it has a layer of wax around the apples and other examples of fruits are such as grapes, yes, they are wax to give it a physical protection so that the skin of the fruit does not break through and microorganism does not enter into the food. Besides that, this layer of wax also prevents moisture loss from the food to keep your apples fresh and this will inhibit the growth of fungi, okay? Fungi cannot penetrate into the fruit because of a layer of wax, okay? Let's look at some examples of food which are waxed. Waxing is used to preserve fruits such as apples, grapes, oranges, lemons, melons, and pineapples. Besides that, waxing is also used to preserve vegetables vegetables like aubergines, pumpkins, tomatoes, turnips, and sweet potatoes. So much about waxing. Now we'll move on to vacuum packing. What exactly does vacuum packing do? In vacuum packing, air is removed from the contents of a package. The absence of air in the package will inhibit or disallow bacteria and fungi to grow because there is no air for them to grow. Bacteria and fungi cannot grow in vacuum or absence of air. Some examples of vacuum-packed food are the vacuum-packed fish, vacuum-packed sausages, and vacuum-packed tempeh. Boys and girls, keep in mind that one food is not limited to only one type of food preservation. Try and think about chilies. If you want to preserve chili, how do you preserve them? Let's say, besides drying chilies, what is the other method of preservation to maintain the freshness of chili? Yes, you can also pickle chilies. So one food is not limited to only one method of food preservation. For example, you can dry chilies or even pickle them. What about fish? You can salt them, can them or smoke them or even freeze fish, right? Okay, now I hope you understand about today's lesson. We'll move on to the exercise section. What is the purpose of adding salt to fish before drying the fish? 1. To prevent the growth of bacteria and fungi To make the fish more tasty when it is cooked To add nutrients to the fish Or to make the drying process faster The answer is A. 1 and 4 only Children, the purpose of Salting is not to make it taste better and it is definitely not to increase the nutrient content in the fish. It is to
draw water out from the fish and to inhibit the growth of microorganisms. Let's take a look at question number two. Which of the following methods of food preservation can remove the water content of the food? A. Freezing B. Canning C. Drying Or is it D. Pasteurization? The answer is C. Drying can remove the water content of food. Question number 3. Substance Q is normally used in pickling. Which of the following are likely to be Q? What substance do you usually use in pickling? Is it sugar, salt, or vinegar? Well, boys and girls, the answer is 1, 2, and 3. You use sugar, salt, and vinegar for pickling. How did you do in the question sections, children? Did you do well? I'm sure you did well. Now, we'll go to the vocabulary part, okay? Vocabulary of the day. Bottling means pembotolan. Canning, pengatinan. Cooling, pendinginan. Drying, pengeringan. Freezing, penyejuk bekuan. Heating, pemanasan. Pickling, penjurukan. Salting, pengasinan, smoking, salai, and last one, vacuum packing, pembungkusan vacuum. Was the words easy? I hope it is. Now, we'll move on to the last part, of, okay? It's the trivia section. know that the eggshell actually serve as an indirect preservation method? Well, it prevents bacteria from entering into the egg. Well, you still have to wash the shell before cooking it. Why so? This is because the shell, the egg covering, right? It may be contaminated with dirty stuff like feces from the chicken, and this may get into your food. That's why wash your eggs before cooking them. Let's see the next trivia. Although high temperature during boiling kills microorganisms, bacterial spores are able to survive this high temperature. When there is suitable condition, these spores will germinate. Now, you know how some foods still spoil even though they have undergone treatments using high heat. Dangerous, aren't they? Okay, children, we have come to the end of the lesson and I'm going to do a quick recap with you. What are the food preservation methods we have learned today? Freezing, cooling, refrigeration, bottling and canning, and drying, salting, so many, right? I hope you remember them and how these methods of preservation keeps or maintains the freshness and quality of your food. Boys and girls, today, try to go around and look at different, different ways of food preservation and identify them. And you can also jot it down into your science journal. I hope you had a fun time with me and thank you for watching ITTV. Bye-bye!